again everyone and if you're new today welcome i'm chrissy at a little glam a lot of mom recently someone on instagram asked a valid question given that we don't use curriculum how do we show our work for record and portfolios understandably so this might be a fear and discourage some families from stepping away from the curriculum boxes I am currently preparing portfolios for our evaluations that are due next month and so today while I start building the math section of one of my students portfolio I thought what a perfect opportunity to turn on the camera to share the answer to this question and debunk this idea that just because we choose unschooling living math go off the beaten path whatever you want to call it it doesn't necessarily mean we don't have tangible work to show for it all right, so I have a lot to share today as I'm sharing over five different ways or methods that we can show work for record keeping or portfolios. Start with method number one, project-based. So creating or recreating a material because what better way to understand a material than to build it? Earlier this year in introducing Time to Noah, we took several days to read through Telling Time by Jules Older. This is a wonderful living math book for introducing temporal concepts, not just in seconds, minutes, hours, but the book also covers days, weeks, months, years, decades, uh, a calendar, etc. Then we made analog clocks. We used 190 pound watercolor paper, watercolor pigments for a wet on wet technique we discussed each hour and its sequential order while the kids attached the hour numbers around the clock also added dots for the minutes and we counted by fives and finally attached the hour and minute hands i believe i shared that video and i'll link it for you here's another i realized that we needed to drill doubles now you can find flashcards anywhere print them off of teachers pay teachers or etsy but we chose to make our own again finding so many learning opportunities in the process i gave the kids several sheets of watercolor paper again we did a wet on wet technique cut them down to size and that's it they're the most beautiful flashcards that we could have sourced uh, in my opinion So how can this exactly go into a portfolio? I utilize a binder like this for our portfolios. I add tabs for each subject and this project can either go in the pocket sleeve of the binder itself or if you want it organized under the subject tab, I use a sheet protector sleeve. Always add dates to your projects and it's that simple. So here's an ongoing math project for Bella. I picked up this DK's Complete Children's Cookbook, I believe last year, um, as the spine for Bella's year on measurements and fractions. So to go with the cookbook, Bella has started a recipe card booklet. Before she begins to prepare the meal, I'll encourage her to copy down the ingredients list and the step-by-step -step process. Not only is this great practice for handwriting and spelling and copy work, but she's also becoming familiar with the ingredients and the process before preparing the meal, aiding in her confidence in the kitchen. I think I might add notes on the back of each recipe card of which tools she utilized and which concepts she practiced along with the date and page number. In addition, I'm also going to include a photocopy of the recipe page out of the book. Photos here would also be a great idea of your child in the kitchen and uh, we have done that as well in previous portfolios. We love making main lesson books. This is one on the quality of numbers block. I laid a spread out of pre-cut booklets, block beeswax crayons, and some loose parts or manipulatives, and together all three of my youngest and I explored each number. So for example, here we have the number four. Representing the number four, Bella chose to draw a butterfly and it's four wings, two fore wings, two hind wings. Then with manipulatives, we demonstrate all the add-ins, subtrahends, and Bella also did factors and quotients for each number one through 12. 
each person's main lesson block book is going to be unique and beautiful. Art and creativity is also so personal and unique to each individual and their skills uh, and their talents. There's no pressure for one to keep up with the other. And you could very well just make it into one year-long math journal. We actually do the journaling method with our nature studies and language arts. This past year, Bella also made a multiplication main lesson book. One of her favorite ways to learn multiplication was through multiplication flowers. The multiplication flower is a fun and artistic way for a child to build the multiplication table, an activity typically seen in Waldorf classrooms. What's neat about the flower is that we can also begin to introduce division. So for example, here I have five groups of flowers with five petals on each flower, creating the equation of five times five. Understanding multiplication by creating a visual of the operation and so forth, increasing the number of groups. Bella had a great time creating all sorts of pretty flowers with loose parts. We also love playing games for math and so sometimes I'll encourage Bella uh, to write down her, her times table or whatever we've practiced after the game. One of our favorite games is called Bump. So to play this game I wrote all the multiples of 4 uh, up to 12 so up to 4 times 12 on these leaves since we're using natural materials and then I mix them up put them in a row. We use a 12-sided die and two types of natural materials. Bella chose to use a stone as her playing piece. I'm using a piece of wood. So the player rolls and multiplies by four, and then you cover the answer with your player piece. So for example, if I roll an eight, I would solve eight times four, and that's 32. So I look for the number 32 and cover it with my piece. Now the next person rolls does the same. If it's the same answer, then they bump you off the leaf. And the point of the game is to get an entire row covered. Lots of fun and just an example of how we show record after practicing math through a game. I also pair our hands-on math materials with printables, which I can then add to the portfolio. So you can typically find printables for the most common materials like an abacus, math cubes, magnet tiles, rods. These here specifically are Montessori beads and again I have shared this material in a video earlier this year. These are colored bead stairs to visually represent the quantity of a number and how those numbers interact with each other. For example, a four bead stair together, linked together with a 10 bead stair equal to 14. The beads can be used to visualize addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So this printable here was utilized by my youngest Luna as an introduction to the beaded stair. We discussed the colors, counted each stair, matched, and stacked. Then she used a corresponding sheet to color in each stair. So be sure to look for printables to pair with your favorite materials you already have at home. And so that takes me right into workbooks and worksheets. While we don't use a curriculum book cover to cover, that doesn't mean we don't occasionally do some fun book work. Noah has been working through the Star Wars math workbook, doing math inspired by his favorite characters just makes it that much more fun for him. And so I'll just pull out a few examples of this workbook for his portfolio. Also, be sure to use sticker activity books. These have a lot of math practice in the dot to dot, color by number, patterns, specifically for my youngest Luna's records. And I also collect loose worksheets. I keep a folder that I can just toss our occasional worksheets in, uh, for example, cut and paste type of worksheets, mastery worksheets for my older student, scavenger hunt. Um, Bella also enjoys color by number. She's moved on to the multiplication. Uh, so granted, we don't use a lot of these, so I don't have a big collection, but just enough so that at the end of the year, I can pick one or two to add to the portfolios. Assessments and placement tests. 
many if not all curriculum companies offer free placement tests that you can download off their website print it and you can add that into the portfolio to show mastery and if you prefer to opt out of the testing method don't forget that most educational apps or websites have options to print the student's work and progress all right, the next method are logs. Some evaluators or even some state laws may even require this step. Our state does not and neither does our evaluator. However, we can be required to provide records at any given time if there's some sort of audit, I suppose would be the reason. So I do like to keep logs of our days. Logging is basically reverse planning and I've talked about it a lot in the past. It works best for us to log what we've accomplished in a day because I don't plan, choose, or lay out my children's days. I don't pick the learning for them. Whether you follow this method of planning or not, I recommend keeping your planning or logs on file. You could transfer it over and create your own spreadsheet or utilize one of the many options already provided on the web. This is a free one by Chicky and Rue that I printed for example purposes today, but I will also link it for you. And finally, a record of our books. We don't utilize a curriculum, but we do utilize lots of beautiful living math books. For example, this reader, A Grain of Rice, is one that we resource to introduce place value. The Grapes of Math Riddles by Greg Tang, a book of riddles and techniques to solve problems in quick and creative ways using rhyming couplets, riddle, and visual clues to help the student find new ways to group numbers for quick counting. So I take all of these books and I turn them into this, a book list or log for the portfolio. I also like to highlight the concept I resourced the book for. And so just like that, we have a hefty, well-rounded, creative, fun, and beautiful math record tab in the portfolio. It is my humble opinion that through these various shows of work, it tells the story of a well-rounded and catered education and year. The idea of the whole child, head, heart, and hands, something that a bunch of hole-punched sheets out of a curriculum book couldn't capture. All right, friends, that's it for today. I hope that this video was helpful. And if it was, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up or dropping a comment down below. I hope that today I was able to share how simple it really is to record keep outside of the curriculum boxes. And more, I hope that I've encouraged some of you towards a life of learning and living together. No boxes and no boundaries between the two.